So at one point, I think in the retreat, I had said that fear of God is not bhakti. But I also said that bhakti or devotion to God may start with fear. God is awesome. <laughs> in the original meaning of the word uh, and also in the American meaning of the <laughs> word awesome. God is awesome. If you can conceive of God, you know, when we first approach the very idea of God, it, is, uh, it can induce deep uh, reverence and can induce fear also. So many um, dualistic religions, theistic religions, start by inculcating fear of God. But what is the objection to that? The objection is fear is uh, not a good friend to love. The ultimate objection, or the ultimate goal being love of God, adoration of God, worship of God. Uh, fear is not a good path to go. It may start there, but quickly it must proceed from fear to awe, to reverence, to love, to adoration, to worship. So, look at the, uh, the gradations given in, in the path of bhakti. First, it starts with shantabhava. Shantabhava means uh, something like the Advaitin has, a, an approach of complete calm and serenity in the presence of God. But higher than that is dasya bhava. The Lord is my master. I am thy servant. That's higher than the shantabhava. But that's closer from a calm philosophical contemplation of the vastness, awesomeness of the divine to the divine is a personal relationship. So the beauty of bhakti is, in Vedanta what we do is, we divinize our human relations and, um, and humanize our, uh, our relation with, with God. Uh, we um, divinize our relations with the human. With everybody we say we see the divinity in you. We see God in you. And with God we have a human relationship. So master and servant. Thou art my Lord, I am thy servant, is a human relationship. Higher than that, Sakya Bhava. Not master and servant, friend. Notice we are coming closer. Friend. From Shanta, the peaceful attitude of a philosophical contemplation, to Dasya, the servant and master relationship, to friends. The Lord is my friend. Buddy. Then you go further. Vatsalya. The Lord is my child. So, uh, baby the Krishna or you know, Gopala or the baby Rama, Ramlala or the Divine Mother as a little girl or, or the baby Jesus. So, what is the point of seeing God as a child? It is to develop this Vatsalya Bhava. Vatsalya means the love of a parent towards uh, God. So, that love of parent towards the child is now um, towards God. Now, if you think of God as your child, you don't go and pray to the child for things. You, your whole thing is to take care of the child. You are overwhelmed with love and protectiveness and you know, a nourishing attitude towards the child. And imagine having that to God. <laughs> so it's a wonderful thing. But see how much closer it has become. And as we progress this way, all the paraphernalia, the power, the glory, the awesomeness, the fearsomeness of God drops away. God tries to come close to us, become as ordinary and as close as possible. That was the secret of the Holy Mother. She seemed as motherly, as simple as your mother back in the village, uh, a typical village mother in Calcutta in the late 19th century. And she was the Divine Mother herself. So the purpose of appearing like that is to draw people closer. And then the even higher than that is the Madhura Bhava, the relationship between the lover and beloved, Radha and Krishna and so on. So all of these attitudes, you see how they are bringing people closer and, uh, and closer to God. And the fear component drops away and the love increases. So, uh, yes, so fear is, it might be preliminary, but it's not, a, ultimately it's not. It's something that you have must overcome and move ahead in the path of bhakti. And then the question he asked was about how in the stories, uh, in Hinduism we find God is, it's full of do's and don'ts and God is the punisher. All that is very preliminary. Not that in those stories there's much of do's and do's and, and God is the punisher. God is the punisher is, is a sort of um, a symbolic way of saying good and bad are causal. We set into motion causes and effects. This is the law of karma. Good, good, bad, bad and none escape the law. Vivekananda says this. Good actions lead to pleasant results. Um, bad actions lead to unpleasant results. And then um, you cannot... So this... And these results are given by God. In a theistic system, we always think of God as karmadhyaksha, 
as the Lord of Karma, the one who gives the results of Karma. 